All right, today we're going to talk about BL Heli 32.8 and why you should not be flying it on your quads. So BL Heli 32.8 has been out for a little while now, and this was the first BL Heli version that I allowed for the variable PWM frequency. So you could have one at low throttle and then one at high throttle as well. And that's all well and good, but if you use that or not, there's an issue in the code that if you use the RPM filler with beta flight, it's gonna impact your flight performance. The RPM telemetry data coming back from the ESC is pretty junky in 32.8. And giving credit where credit is due, this was put onto my radar by Ivan, a developer for beta flight, when he was doing some tests for getting ready for some of the races he's gonna be uh, heading out to and trying to hunt for the what settings in BL Heli gives you the max RPM. So you haven't checked out those videos from Ivan. I'm going to drop those links down below. Check out his channel. Uh, he's also the father of Betaflight presets. Uh, really hell of a nice guy and one of the top racers in the United States. He's recently been doing a bunch of testing on BLA Heli, some in regard to max RPM, trying to edge out peak performance since in spec class racing, you're pretty much at 100% throttle for most of the track. At least they are, not me. And he also found out of a couple of cool things along the way. Again, I'll drop links down at his channel down below, and you can see some of the videos uh, right here where he's taking a look at some of that stuff. So this was the major find that a bunch of people were seeing with BL Heli 32.8, which has been resolved in their latest test firmware, but let's talk about the issue first, and then we can talk about uh, what you can do to get a little bit better flight performance. As you can see on the left-hand side here, this is uh, BL Heli 32.7. A lot of my quads are still on that as well. Uh, BL Heli 32.8 is the again the first one with the uh, variable PWM frequency that you could put on your quads, and some people were checking that out. But I don't think a lot of people know that you know you can see this is the RPM signal coming back from uh, the ESCs to the flight controller. So what we have here on the screen is just the four motors stacked on top of each other, and you can see the actual RPM. So this is 6,914. RPM, revolutions per minute, and that equates to 115 hertz for where it would place the RPM filter for the notches to cancel out any vibrations from the motor spinning at that RPM. The other thing I have here in this test is just my motor one command. Uh, motor one, two, three, and four are all the same for the testing I did for the command, so I just plotted the motor one. So as you can see with this testing, as I step up the RPMs of the motor, uh, you can see kind of the signal you're getting from that. And you can do the same thing here on BL Heli 32.8. And you can see the difference uh, in the signal and you know how much noisier it is. And you might be saying, well, Mark, that's not that much noisy or, you know, uh, one between the other. But you'll notice in BL Heli 13.7, you don't have these big spikes here uh, that you see in BL Heli 32.8. And knowing this data goes through a low pass filter, that's definitely going to pull those notches off of the center frequency of your vibrations. And with notch filters, that's critical. So it's going to start to let noise through and until it gets back on track there. And you can see that pretty consistently uh, throughout the entire uh, process here, stepping these commands and whatnot. You can see it here even going from, you know, zero to 100% throttle ramps um, over here as well. You can kind of see those, those juts, and you just don't have that in BL Heli 32.7. Now, there is a silver lining here. The BL Heli devs have been working to resolve this issue and make other improvements, and they have a pre-release right now of 32.8. 8.3 and when you load that up comparing the two so you have 32.7 here 32.8 was over here and then you can see the 32.8.3 uh, is much better much better than both now it is pre-release software but i've done a bunch of testing with it and i have not noticed any issues with it so far i think a bunch of people have been flying it now at this point so i would say it's pretty safe but it is still pre-release so uh, you have to take that uh, for what it is so yeah, just comparing those all together, this is 32.7, 32.8, 32.8.3. You can really see the difference in how it was okay, got worse with these big spikes down here, and then got a whole lot cleaner than both releases. So the next logical question is, okay, well, that's great. These are just squiggly lines on a graph. What's that actually mean to me? Well, these RPM readings, if you're using the RPM filter in Betaflight, which a lot of people are, actually 
set where the target of that notch goes, as I previously mentioned. And notches are very specific uh, where they need to be. So that being off um, by you know having these jitters and jags in it is not going to help your filtering regime. Now, is it going to make a world and a difference uh, for your quad? I, you know, I don't know. It's going to make a difference. A lot of times with quadcopters at this point, we're all, it's a game of inches. It's, you know, there's not one big, huge silver bullet. So this is definitely some inches that you're further behind. If you're on BL Heli 32.8, that you might as well either go back to 32.7 or go up to 32.8.3. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be doing with my quads. Now, if you want instructions on how to get onto 32.8.3, uh, I will, again, drop links below to the timestamp spot in Ivan's video where he goes through how to upgrade to 32.8.3 using the 32.8 uh, Bio Heli Suite configurator. But wait, before you go, I have some other cool things I did in this testing that uh, I'd like to show you. So one of the cool things about logging is it's available for anybody to check it out for themselves. So the RPM data you can get back on any of your flights and log files just by going into the black box tab. You don't need to set logging on an arm switch or anything like that. If you don't have logging set to a mode, Betaflight automatically starts to log as long as you have an SD card inserted or you have some data flash. I don't have an SD card inserted on this flight controller right now. But uh, if you can just simply go into there, if uh, you know you have onboard flash or an SD card, you make sure that that's clear. If it is, next time you arm, it will start to log. If you wanna get RPM data, all you have to do is go into here. I would set this probably at 2K logging rate, and then down here, set this to RPM filter. That is gonna give you the RPM data after it's been filtered. So the data comes into Betaflight, it goes through a one low pass filter to clean the data up, which doesn't clean the data all, up all that much actually, I've looked at it. And, uh, but yeah, that's what you can see. Now the data I showed you just a second ago, that actually was the D-shot RPM data. So if I type in RPM right here, you can see there's this D-shot RPM telemetry. That is the same data, this is unfiltered, so this is prior to the low pass filter, and this is filtered, this is after the low pass filter. And of course, like with many things in Betaflight, this is kind of a, a filter, a hidden filter. It's in there, but uh, it's not one that you're usually adjusting for flight performance. But you can go into the CLI and see the settings by typing get RPM. And then down here, you'll see this RPM filter low pass hertz 150, and that's the default. Range goes from 100 to 500. And again, this is not on the gyro. This is not filtering data from the vibrations of the quad that goes into the gyro and then the PID loop and all that kind of stuff, the normal filters we're talking about. This is just to filter that signal that's you know coming from the ESC, the RPM data, and then going to set that uh, RPM notches. So you can adjust this. Um, you know, Obviously, the higher that goes, the less that signal will be delayed, so you're more accurate your notches will be as well. And I wouldn't be afraid to bump it up if you want to play around with it a little bit. I'll show you some tests here in a second, but it doesn't change all that much. It doesn't, especially with the most cleaned up uh, version, the 32.8.3, uh, 500 hertz. It, it's about the same as it is at 100 hertz. And of course, if you have less delay on that signal coming in, so this will probably add a couple milliseconds of delay. So those notches are kind of always behind, right? Because they're being filtered. So it's the RPM data is coming in. It's getting that one filter on it. It's adding a couple milliseconds of uh, delay to it. So it's kind of always tracking those peaks, but it's always just a little bit behind. Uh, obviously, the less filtering you have, I think at 500 hertz, it takes it down to like 0.3 milliseconds. So this information here is the same test, just you know, looking at the other debug mode. So this is after the filtering. You can see even with those spikes on 32.8 and with the filtering, you're still, see how it's pulling uh, those notches kind of off course there. So, you know, that's, that's, it's not good. Uh, you know, is it the end of the world? It's probably not the end of the world, but it's just, it sure ain't helping. So, um, and then obviously here's the best one, the 32.8.3. It's a heck of a lot cleaner than uh, 32.7 or 32.8. Of course, you can see that there. So these were the two runs with the RPM low pass filter set at 100 Hertz. And then this one over here is it set at 500 Hertz. You can see it's, you know, it's obviously, uh, you know, not as clean data going to the RPM filter at 100, 500. But um, yeah, I think with 32.8.3, it's probably worth bumping it up a little bit. Um, probably somewhere in between, maybe 300 hertz, something like that to drop off some of the latency 
Um, you, you are getting a little bit more, you know, moving around of those notches. Maybe that pulls it off the RPM of the motor vibrations a little bit. So there's some balance there. But uh, yeah, you can see it's it's not all that different uh, between the two things, which just reinforces again, which I've said for a long time, uh, first order low pass filters just don't do much. So that's why there's so much focus in beta flight on notch filters and at least uh, second order or third order low pass filters. They have a lot of delay, but at least they do something. These first order ones, they just they just don't do much air attenuation wise. And here quickly is a spectrograph between the two. Now, the other cool thing you can do with checking out RPM data is you can check out your own motor response time. So you can put that on as a debug mode, check out different props, check out different motors, whatever. And you can see and measure the response time of your quad. You can use the motor commands to see when the command is actually going to out to the motors. And then you can check the RPM data to see you know, how long it's going to take to react. So I did a bunch of testing on that, uh, some scary indoor testing where you strap the quad down and go for a gold. Um, you can see some of that up here and you'd be surprised at how long it takes the motors to respond, uh, even to 10% incremental change. This is ramping from zero to 100, but incremental changes are more important. So I'm gonna go through all that on this week's Patreon only video. If you're interested in that, check out the links below. But outside of that, thanks for your time. And remember, friends don't let friends fly BL Heli 32.8.